Hey there, Shirtlight here and I welcome you to the fourth episode of the Overlay Bar. This time I'm here with James from the Lunar Nocturne channel and Matthew from Crooked Paradise who will be taking the co-host chair this time around. <laughs> uh, hello there. Hey, how's, how's it going? I'm Lunar Nocturne, or James. <laughs> feel free to re refer to me as whichever. <laughs> so uh, feel free to give the fellas watching a brief overview of, of what kind of stuff you do. I, I cover most. I do uh, video essays on games that I'm really in love with, or games that you know not many people know about that I want to shine a light on. Um, before that, I did let's plays, and those didn't fare. Those didn't fare well. I <laughs> so I was like, yo, let's switch it up a bit. And I decided to cover Duel Masters for the PlayStation 2, a criminally underrated game. Well, lots of games on the PS2 are underrated, but that one. <laughs> so that's one of them. But yeah, um, so I like putting together all these big, all these big um, multi-hour projects on my favorite games just to break them down and give people some you know somewhat of a new point of view about what you know about what the game's about stuff like that yep and uh, they're pretty impressive from what I've seen yeah, yeah. yeah I've just started doing them like two years ago as well <laughs> and if I didn't need enough uh, well if I didn't need to sleep at all I would have been uh, making those uh, long-form things on uh, you know Gundam stuff myself <laughs> Yeah. yeah I checked out your. Oh, sorry. No, you're good, man. You're good. What'd you check out? I, I checked out uh, your Saints Row 2 video, and I'm already considering getting myself a copy or, or a way to play the game. Cause... See? <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. I, lo I love hearing people say that, too. And a lot of people, and also family members, you know, I say I get nervous. I said before we started that I get nervous about family members watching my videos because I say, as you have heard from the Saints Row 2 video, I've said a lot of not so good words. <laughs> yeah. <but they're... laughs> I mean, uh, it's basically but... the same with uh, my parents uh, watching my stuff because, you know, when it comes to my humor, I'm a rowdy motherfucker. Me too. <laughs> Hi, Mom, if you somehow find this uh, podcast. <laughs> but a lot of family and friends have told me that they like falling asleep to my long-form videos, and that's pretty charming because I do the same thing to, um, you know, it could be it could be any long-form video about, like, say, God of War or Dragon Quest or, or Shin Megami Tensei, anything. Which, by the way, I'm still, I'm actually working on, I sound like one of those rappers that says they have, like, 2,500 songs stashed away, but... Like, <laughs> Yeah, but it's I, in my yeah, vault, bro. But, but I'm working on three different projects on at once right now. I'm not tackling them like I'm tackling like one like one project each every day. When it comes to scripting, editing, and stuff like that, which by the way, if you're getting into this, don't do that unless you know <laughs> what you're getting into. I just do it. I just do it when I feel like I'm bored or or if I hit a roadblock. I mean, I, I'm, I was just trying to say that it's it's good to have more things going on so that if if you get stuck, you can just. Keep keep doing something else and keep yourself occupied. Yeah, so I won't do I won't do do more than three projects at the same time. Cause, like I said, cause, I mean, if you like, there was one rapper I remember when um he made the news off this little um music site or whatever. It said, oh, so and so has uh, uh something thousand songs uh archived right now. <laughs> Keeps me busy. Yep. Oh gosh, and oh, I got stuck for a second, but it's all right. But the horror. But yeah, the hardest part for me is when it comes to scripting. Is I don't, like if you, as you've seen in my videos, I like to start from the beginning, talk about what the development was like and how difficult it was. That is difficult with a lot of developers trying to find an interview about said game, especially when Wikipedia has a lot of. Um, I don't uh, and I don't use Wikipedia as the main source. I use it as a start, you know, as a jumping point. I find one source and then follow it through. Um, look at the website. However. Wikipedia isn't good at archiving, and um, when I try to find these developer interviews, the archive, even the archive link will be dead. And I'm and I'm thinking to myself, should I use this? Should I use this bit uh, in my video? Yeah, research is hard. Yeah, like uh, one time I tried uh, looking up uh, one thing uh, related to to the soundtrack uh, of the OAF MS team, I think, because uh, <laughs> that one was recorded in Prague, so. You know, oh. I live in the middle of Europe, so that's just over the road, metaphorically, of course. Yeah, eight hours, so, eight hours. <laughs> yeah, eight oh, hours. Oh, yeah, in Prague? So, oh, and, yeah. Uh, yeah, during my search I found out that uh, people who recorded that thing in, like, I think 1996, that, uh, yeah, the main guy uh, passed away, and the rest of them don't work there anymore, so... 
I <laughs> guess the attempt at uh, trying to interview one would be quite hard. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and and that's yeah that's why I'm so iffy about using uh, certain interviews because like it'll say because like like I said the Wikipedia page will say and then developer John Doe said so and so was actually intended for. And then when I go and look at the link, it's dead. I'm like, okay, let's not use this because I, there's no way, there's nowhere else where I can verify this. The archive is dead. So, and Wayback Machine won't show me anything. So let's not do that. Because yeah, I don't want to be I the mean... sort. Yeah, I don't want to be the source of like fan misconception. Kind of like JoJo fans, they'll say Araki said one thing when he never even said that at all. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it's it's I I noticed this that the uh, the videos start or almost like documentary esque and it's it's very cool to to get that sort of atmosphere oh, laid out first. I know like, I yeah. love doing I love doing that because I grew up um I grew up watching of all things Vice do uh, documentaries by Vice and HBO, and, <laughs> and I was like yo let's try to let's try to do that with my videos when I when I started doing the video essay thing let's try to do that with my videos now set the tone and atmosphere with the music and in footage yeah that's very cool <laughs> like i get i can't believe it i got inspired by vice interviewing some drug lord over in south africa <laughs> or some other faraway country <laughs> yeah i wish i could have done <clears throat> at least uh one of my videos uh in the same vein as the lord of war intro <laughs> lord of war yes like uh i don't know like uh one out of ten people uh, owns a uh, fucking Zaku 2. Now the question is, how do we get the uh, other nine, etc. The other. <laughs> <coughs> oh gosh. Oh yeah. I see, like I'm looking at it right now. I, I remember that movie, Lord of War. <laughs> yeah, with the whole uh, title sequence, that was that was glorious. <laughs> oh, that's right. That's right. Yeah, I remember this movie. It's just funny. Oh gosh, well yeah, so that, so yeah, that portion of the videos, that came from me just, you know, watching documentaries by Vice and HBO, and then just me incorporating it in video. Because <laughs> then, because like, I would re -watch. I remember I get to the final cut of, um, the, I got to the final cut of the infamous video, I'm like, wait a minute, these chapters need intros, so I, uh, so what I did was I rushed, and then like just threw together some intros with cool names and that's it. <laughs> you know, whenever I make uh, guides for a specific uh, units and in the various games I cover, I just fr uh, throw together a very simple, you know, kind of shitposty intro skit. Like for the, <laughs> for the Nobel Gundam, I literally just uh, took a sequence out of the Sailor Moon, then I uh, went and looked up uh, the line art for the machine from the source books and then then I literally took the transformation sequence you know that happens every episode and then I just <laughs> threw the sprites on that it was glorious yes okay that's right I remember you showed us a screenshot of you making a shit post on one of your um I think it was, was it premiere uh, what editing application was it a uh, VSDC video editor it's yes. kind of like DaVinci Resolve, but it's it's got its own quirks and gimmicks, and ooh. Uh, it's kind of yeah, weird. You, like it's the Linux uh, of video editors. The Linux of <laughs> that's, to say the least. If you have to use Linux to compare whatever you're doing, like, you're doing some heavy duty shit, man. Nah. Uh, I hope Linux, not. Yeah, I used I actually used yeah I I used DaVinci partially in one of my videos, um, mostly. To um, as a tran mostly for the transitions. I never used it for anything else because I had a hard time figuring out DaVinci in the first place. And I, oh man, I mainly use Sony Vegas, which I allegedly got. I won't say how. <laughs> <laughs> oh god, I use Sony Vegas, or well, it's Vegas now since Sony uh, sold it off. But I use Vegas. It's pretty easy to understand. It's it's also good for anyone that wants to do this kind of thing or any heavy duty ed editing, and they're a beginner to it. It's basically like, it, it's pretty much. I want to say like Windows Movie Maker for, I mean the newest Windows Movie Maker. That's a terrible um, comparison, but it's just easy to jump into and easy to understand. That's why so many uh, creators use it. So, uh, since we're doing this one in December, I hope you got some downtime during the holidays. I sure did. Oh yes. Now oh, yes, that I brings have. me right to the video game talk. Oh, have you played man. any interesting stuff lately? Yes, I have. Um, I've been playing. <laughs> oh man. So I've been writing down notes for this review, and I've been playing, like, even on my off time, like, without the notes and shit. I've been playing 
Saints Row 2022 for the for the review. Oh no! Ah. This thing, by the way, I'm actually taking a break from it because pain. it's almost killed my PS4. The pain. <laughs> So what happened was it caused three different database corruptions, and I had to like do a self repair for the PS4. And I'm like, yo, I'm not doing this anymore if it's gonna keep doing this. Someone even told me, listen, if you have to do this, you just grab it from different, just grab it from different YouTube channels. I'm like, no, I want this footage to be my own. <laughs> I thought they'd uh, <laughs> suggest uh, grabbing the footage from uh, Sophie and uh ruined streams of the game. Oh, yeah. matter of fact, um, it, yeah, it's, yeah, stream, I said stream, Twitch <laughs> doesn't, that's why I don't use Twitch a lot when it comes to streaming, because it doesn't archive anything good. Yeah, or that's, it's either, it, yeah. That's a pain in the, the ass. It's either the streamer themselves that has to do it, or, you know, it's Twitch, I don't know. Another game I've been playing is uh, Soul Hackers 2, if you can call it that. It's more of a spiritual sequel? I don't know. It's supposed to be a spiritual sequel to Soul Hackers, which came out on the Sega Saturn back in '97. Uh, I, I, I don't know how to feel about this game right now, man. It's it's all right for the most part. Mechanically, it's good. I like that. I like all the um, I like all the mechanics it's incorporating from Shin Megami Tensei into it. Still, I don't know. I don't know. The setting just rubs me the wrong way. I think they should have just called it Soul Hackers followed by a <laughs> subtitle instead of calling it Soul Hackers 2. Because if you're calling if you're putting a number after uh, any sequel, it could be movie, game, or whatever. That's implying that it has somewhat of a direct connection to the last game, unless it's stated otherwise. So kind of like the Borderlands pre-sequel? Pre-sequel kind of makes sense. It's more of an interquel. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, I mean, as for me, I went back to my classics. Like, uh -oh. obviously, Hotline Miami, Super which Robot. I like because of the story and action. And, <laughs> uh, two, also one of my favorites, Nier Automata. Near Automata. Oh yeah, I went and got the platinum for that two years ago. Amazing game. Yep. No, no, not two years ago. I got it. No, it was three years ago. <laughs> and you know what? Near for all the good music it, it has, I don't think it got nominated for anything at the Game Awards. Um, it never got. It never even got nominated for uh, music. I think. Did it even show up at the at 2017? I forgot at the Game. Uh, yeah, no clue. I I don't really follow those since they're yeah. usually just. Uh, you I know, watch it for the last. The Game Oscars. <laughs> <laughs> despite despite me asking about if it got nominated, I don't take it too seriously. Yeah, no one should. Yeah, yeah in 2017, that was actually a huge year for Japanese games. No joke. Um, I think Gravity Rush 2 came out, Yakuza 0 finally put the series into the mainstream. Um, Persona 5, of course, that also, blew, for better or for worse, that made the series mainstream. A year before Help that, me. I think Max Boost came out in uh, Japanese arcades. It's a funny little arcade game. You got mech fights. You got uh, <laughs> like uh, funnily enough, uh, Bandai Namco is incredibly stingy when it comes to releasing uh, their uh, Gundam vs. games uh, on the home consoles. Because as you might, as you might or might not know, uh, in the arcades it's uh, 100 yen per game, and uh, they're getting like. Crazy numbers. Oh yeah, you can't make money off a game someone just bought and won't spend more money on unless there's DLC. Yeah, and it uh, took them like, uh, I think half a decade. It was uh, 2021 when uh, Maxi Boost finally got the <laughs> PS port. <laughs> was it in, was it in Japan only? Oh, uh, no. In fact, uh, the PS4 port of Maxi Boost was Literally the first English port uh, of uh, of a Gundam vs. game ever since like it was 2002 or 2004 when uh, like the old PS2 titles were around. I don't remember. Probably gonna correct my uh, estimation uh, in the editing right afterwards. It's all good. No problem. Yeah, and that's the beauty of editing. Thank goodness we're not doing this live. Which, <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Man. I've never, yeah, I've never liked, uh, I never liked uh, live podcast because if you fuck up, everyone's gonna know. <laughs> yep. At least with, yeah, at least with editing, you put an asterisk that says in all caps, "This was released uh, in so and so year." <laughs> as for as for my game experience this month, I mean, I just loaded up my PS2 and played oh, some yeah, classics. PS2? Yeah, I still yeah, have my, uh, and, uh, uh, go on. No, I, I mean, 
I wasn't gonna say much, but now I can I can finally play it with my uh, with the new controller, or I mean with DualShock 4. So so that's cool. <laughs> so it's uh, much more playable <laughs> and no. nice. Yeah. Have you played and... any San Andreas? Matthew? Yeah, 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 I, I done. Yeah, I have it on my shelf. Ooh. And the, and I'm the one unlucky bastard who picked up uh, the Rockstar launcher copy that just turns no. your <laughs> oh, that just turns your uh, the camera into a helicopter engine. Oh yeah, that oh it's the um so was it like the bootleg version or the pirated version where Rockstar will note it will insert some anti piracy code and fuck up the camera? No, this is literally the official Rockstar release on PC. Oh hell like, no! It's it's that glitchy. Oh. Yes, <laughs> it was I so it was dog like, shit. I, thought, I I I thought there was like the anti piracy code from GTA 4 that they put in the older games. Like, like I literally, uh, I f the furthest I got without the camera going completely, you know, ape shit on me, was uh, I think uh, the bit where uh, the CJ went and. Uh, <laughs> kind of started writing over the graffiti of the bolos. Oh no. Oh yeah, that the, oh, yeah, one of the old um. And then I, I think I tried turning around and then it started spinning. And that was the last time oh, was ever since I played it. Oh no. It's like the beginning of the game. There's not much of it, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like I'm um, better off just uh booting up the thing on a PS2 emulator. <laughs> yeah. By the way, um, speaking of emulation, though, a friend of mine has shared with me some information. The PS3 emulator can now officially run <clears throat> every game. It just now it all depends on your PC. I mean, you can't just hop on. You know, you can't just hop on a library computer and start playing uh, and start playing un uh, Uncharted or whatever. <laughs> Revengeance. <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> that was always the problem. If even if the emulator is very good and well optimized, I still can't yeah. run it. Probably. And this is a seven and and this is the PS3 we're talking about, which had Cell, which was notorious. If you were in the coding scene, which was notoriously difficult to write code for in the first place. That's why a lot of developers shell. I mean, shifted development from the PS3 to the to make to an ex, to a 360 exclusive or PC. Yeah, uh, like uh, before, I tuned down a lot of the settings in my PS3 emulator. My computer would uh, start sounding st sounding like a uh, you know a very busy rice cooker. Whenever oh I, uh, so whenever you I, I on, on your CPU. <laughs> I mean, it was not that bad, but uh, like from the audible side of things, it s uh, sounded like uh, you know, like the fan was uh, on its last legs. I remember when I got this computer. This so, you're all right. So this computer is not powerful by any means, and if you want to know how underpowered it is, this is an all-in-one PC with the Core i3 10th uh, gen. <laughs> This thing is not send. This thing is not sending rockets to the moon by any means. But one day, the first day, like the day, like the first, second day, I got it. I mean, I was with it. I fit my fans start spinning all of a sudden. So I checked the task manager. Someone had somehow um, infected my computer with a crypto jacking virus, and they were mining uh, crypto from my computer using using the CPU or the card or whatever. I don't know how this crypto how this crypto mining stuff works. Whoa. But what I do know is Whoa. that crypto mine the way crypto mining works is that they stress they use it until the uh CP I mean until the GPU runs out and it's fried. Oh damn. Yes. Yeah, so I don't know I don't remember how I did it. I guess I it was as easy as going to the uninstall application or whatever on the in the control panel. So I uninstall it was in gibberish or whatever. I couldn't even read it and then my fan went back to normal. Whoa. The Whoa. second day, mind you. And, and this was in 2021 when crypto had blown up too. Yeah, well, we're on the topic of uh, games. Uh, I did notice that uh, back when you did uh, a lot of those uh, let's plays. Uh, oh man! You did, uh, I think, Kevin and uh, yes, Persona. Yeah, Persona 3. I love that playthrough. And so, are you big on JRPGs? Yes, I am. Huge fan. Been into JRP. Um, I um, when I was little, I was fleetingly into JRPGs because I didn't know what to call them. Um, I just called them games where you fight with menus. Because <laughs> <laughs> my only experience with them was just Final Fantasy X. After a friend had given it to me, I was eight years old. I was like, oh hey, this is cool. And I didn't start like get 
And I didn't start, like, getting fully invested into JRPGs until, like, 2016. Yeah, I just download. I, I was bored one, one summer afternoon, so I downloaded a bunch of Final Fantasy games and um, all these emulators. And I was like, yo, I'm, I'm with it now. I love JRPGs. <laughs> In my case, it was the SD Gundam G Generation games because, uh, you know, it's kind of like... Uh, Imagine uh, if you mixed uh, the Super Robot War games with <laughs> something like uh, Fire Emblem, something like that, and uh, oh, oh, Super Robot. That's yeah, the strategy. I mean, the uh, tactical RPG titles. Yeah, that's the and that's the great strategy ones. I mean, I got into those because while well, I do prefer like you know stuff that I can uh, move around real time. I yeah. grew attached over time to like a lot of those uh, G-Gen titles and uh, <laughs> you know some of uh, the Platinum games such as Nier Automata. First yeah. of all because the combat is absolutely glorious and second of all because I am an ass man. Definitely. Matter of fact they got a trophy for, uh, for doing yes. that too. Yes. <laughs> that was literally one of my first achievements in the game. And um, and there was also a trophy for um, playing as one of the characters. I think it was one or both of them while they were half naked for a set amount of time. Okay. So even Yokotaro knows. Yep. <laughs> but, I, but I've got a lot of love for the genre, man. I love JRPGs. Well, I, I sound like I sound like one of those dude, one of those actors that they put at E3 or whatever. Yeah, I love JRPGs, man. <laughs> they, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but and then I got in late 2016, I picked up a copy of Persona 4. That was fun. Well, what was not fun? Uh, I picked it up on the PlayStation 2 first of all because who the fuck was going to try to look for a Vita <laughs> oh, around no. Christmas time? But then, like, um, but then I got the money for a Vita, and I picked one up. I'm like, yo, fuck the PS2 version. <laughs> and then I picked up Persona 5 at launch. That was actually an adventure too. I had to drive. I, I drive. I don't have a license yet. <laughs> America, <laughs> America loved their cars, though. <laughs> Anyways, I I biked from like, cool. yeah, I biked from from my city deep into from my city deep into the suburbs just so I could pick up Persona 5. I oh, got man, my license oh, yeah. last year. Mm -hmm. I mean, well, this one, but. I'm uh, not completely sure how fast I'll be editing, so I guess I'll say gas, last year. Gas, gas, He's gonna step on the gas. Yeah. As a matter of fact, I did watch Initial D, and it was bang. It was a total banger. Yes, like always, the music, like all the memes and shit with the music, it's justified. Yes. It, it's legendary. I remember when I'd seen panels for Initial D when I was um, when I was getting into manga as a kid. I'm like, how do you read it? How do you read something about racing? Aren't you supposed to watch it? <laughs> I think my dad and my dad actually told me he was he actually the first anime he watched was Initial D. Oh man, he's not he's not an anime man by any means. As a matter of fact, he calls them Dragon Ball Z kind of shows. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can that. emphasize with that. I, 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 I love yeah, him. my co-host is in the similar boat. Yeah, for sure. But while we. Well, yeah, while we are on the topic of, of emulation and older games, I wanted to ask if you had to pick or if you could pick any game uh, that would be remade for the current gen, what would it be? Oh man, that is a tough one. I've got so many on. Oh, I'm looking at my stack of games right now, my PS3s and shit. Oh man, if anyone could be remade. And I, I mean, a, a good kind of remake, not the definitive edition oh. that we got last Oh, time. definitely. Oh man, I'd have to pick. <laughs> Silent Hill 3. Cool. That's a good pick. Yeah. yeah, so... Oh, then again, it's aged pretty well, like the controls and everything. But still, Silent Hill 3, I'd like to see, you know, a remake with, you know, lots of modern cinematog... Um, lots of modern... Not modern, but, like, better cinematography. Not that the cinematography was bad in the first place, but just anything, like, with what the technology yeah. we have today. I'd like to see they, them follow up with a remake to an already good, mechanically good game. Those are the best kinds of remakes. Yeah, that's the thing. If the if the original game has the mechanics and the physics physics and everything it needs, then then it's it's uh, it will be nice to see it uh, yeah. with with the current gen graphics. That was uh, that's what I was thinking uh, with uh, SSX three. I don't know if you have ever oh, played that game, man. but if 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 we got a remake for anything, then I would pick that for sure. Yeah, there's a game I played similar game. to. There's a game I played similar to SSX when I was a kid. Um. It's an unknown PlayStation 2 game. It's called Jetix 2O. 
Um, okay, never was, heard of that. Yeah. I know. <laughs> Nobody has. I got it when I was um, when I was when turned seven. Um, the game it's basically SSX on water. You play, you race using jet skis, and you do tricks too. Ooh. And there's also okay. A that seems. Good. In... Yeah, that seems that seems really cool. I mean, if if it has the same vibe that SSX does, then then it does. I, I should give it a try. <laughs> yeah, because like the characters are like based off of stereotypes from their respective countries. You've got the you've got the tough guy Russian, of course. <laughs> yeah, Zangief. No joke. <laughs> it's the tough guy Russian. He's like, I will crush them like bugs. <laughs> <laughs> he says that. <laughs> then you have the dude bro American. He's blonde. He's muscular and everything. He's and he talks like a surfer. He's like, Yo, dude, I'm ready to win this race. <laughs> <laughs> and then, strangely enough, this one this is not even a stereotype. There's this goth chick from Spain in the game, and she's just all emo and shit. Now I actually want to. I think I still have it on. It's somewhere. Um, we just moved into this house, so it's probably in one of the moving boxes. Because now I want to play it. Maybe <laughs> I can just emulate it. Yeah, I can just emulate it. Yeah, I would pick. Uh, well, that's a tough choice because I know of a lot of uh, games that could use a remake. Like, for example, Encounters in Space uh, for the PS2, so that uh, it won't Ooh, have. What's uh, that about? Uh, imagine uh, a more mecha end of uh, things. Uh, how do I put it? It's basically Ace Combat, but with uh, but with Max and uh, the the porting to the PS2 left uh, some uh, rather unfortunate jank. And my second pick would probably be Operation Troy, which is uh, a Gundam game for the Xbox. And that one yeah. uh, <laughs> that one was basically Titanfall before Titanfall. I, I'd say. Ooh. I mean. I still have to look up uh, the year Titanfall was released so that I ain't getting shit wrong, but... <laughs> yeah, I think it was 2014 here, so... Let's use the information superhighway real quick. <laughs> yeah. Let's see. Titanfall was released in, uh... Yeah, in 2014 for the Xbox One as one of their, uh... One of their launch titles. Well, you can't really call it a launch title. It can launch month, months later, but it was one of the games that, was trying to, that, was, that they used to try and sell the console. Yeah, the Mobile like Ops One Year War, <laughs> also known as uh, Operation Troy, was, uh... From 2008. Oh, Japan definitely. Only. That's a good comparison. Titanfall. Well, I've never. I'm talking like I played a game, but a game from 2008 matching Titanfall like that. I mean, it's got a lot of uh, similar gimmicks, even though, you know, obviously, for the, you know, there was a lot of uh, things that uh, the technology at the time couldn't do, meaning that it's far less jumpy. There, isn't uh, that. Uh, Quake levels of uh, mobility. <laughs> okay, Quake. I mean, uh, basically that sort of uh, parkour-esque, uh, you know, sort of movement uh, that uh, Unreal Tournament and uh, Titanfall are known for. Oh, parkour, yeah. This is that era of shooters where, um, or first-person shooters, where they wanted to try and do what Titanfall was doing. You know, all the all the wall running and everything. Black Ops 3 tried it, it did okay for the most part. Um, then Titanfall 2 was an amazing follow-up that was doomed to fail because EA set it up to die. Yeah, they released it sandwiched in between Battlefield 1, which was already published by EA, Battlefield 1, and I think what was coming out that year? Infinite Warfare? Yeah, Infinite Warfare, Call of Duty. And because of that, the game's gone down as an underrated classic, which if you haven't, please try it out. Although I think you might need to download the North Star thing for the PC, because, you know, some vengeful hacker took down the servers for Titanfall 2. I have to say that, uh, you know, the whole thing with uh, FPS uh, games copying, uh, like, the various trends from uh, <laughs> from other genres, that, uh, in this uh, case, it was a rather positive thing, but, like, in the case of the whole uh, first-person shooters with RPG elements, that, that was absolutely oh, oh terrible. Do you remember Far Cry New Dawn? Oh gosh, I I have my I actually bought that for like Black Friday years ago, but I haven't I haven't even touched it yet. It's basically Far Cry New Dawn, and its consequences have been a disaster for the human race. Oh my gosh! Imagine That's all the bullet fun. sponges. It's literally oh, Far Cry the Bullet Sponge Edition, the game. 
is because lots of those um, open world first person shooters are trying to do what Borderlands did, but worse. The reason why Borderlands worked was because a, you know, the enemies were actually felt fun to engage. They didn't feel like you were. It didn't feel like you were. Oh gosh, it didn't feel like you were watching paint dry as you were um, hosing them down with bullets. Yep. You know, the enemies were. Yeah, not only that, but the uh, but the way the skill system works too, and you have special abilities. Meanwhile, Far Cry, I don't know. Yeah. And. It's not even first-person shooters that are trying to be pretend RPGs, but it's also, you know, action-adventure games, too. For example, there's a game that I'm consi- that I'm qu- considering not reviewing in my little Saints Row line of videos, Agents of Mayhem. Oh, no. The reason why I'm not, I'm consider- I, why I'm holding that view in consideration is because it's trying to do so many things at once that it's too overstimulating for me to write about. It wants to be an RPG, an action-adventure game. Oh, I smacked my keyboard. An action-adventure game, open world. A hero shooter, no joke. It wants to be all of those things at once. Man, why did you remind me of that release? Oh, fuck. Yes, and I wanted to like be one of the few to cover it in depth, but with how much it has going on, the game is so bloated that I don't know if I can, if I can or even want to review it. <laughs> I, I even loaded it up a, like a month ago, and I felt overwhelmed just looking at the open world and the map. I'm like, no. It was promptly uninstalled to make space. Oh man, I even consulted a friend of mine about it. He was like, "Yo, man, I don't blame you if you have if you if you do cancel the review." So it'll go down. It might go down as lost media at the, <laughs> if I don't find out what I want to do with it. I mean, uh, you know, before we started recording, you did bring up uh, the second-hand market. So, uh, I mean, if yeah. uh, someone uh, doesn't know that the game is crap yet, you can, you know, That's resell it. <laughs> Then again, I don't know if anyone wants to find that out for two hours before they go and buy it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm glad, you know, smartphones were invented because when I was, you know, when I was in high school, you know, I got my little allowance of $20 and I would speed off to GameStop on my bicycle. And, you know, whenever I'd see an obscure game I'd never heard of, I would, like, look it up on, on, on YouTube and, like, no, fuck that. And then and in the days before smartphones, you had to just go off of either magazine reviews, if there was a magazine review, or just the cover. You didn't know if you were getting a, an, uh, an action game or, an, or a JRPG that just had the cover of an action game. Yeah, but w- what I loved about the physical copies of games back in the PS2 era, you could just read the instruction manual along <laughs> with the pictures, and it, it, has, it, it had a certain vibe to it that's just irreplaceable. That's how it was, that's how it was for me. When I, so I t- and you watched the Saints Row 2 video. I told that story about my dad brought me home, was driving me home from the mall. So what happened yeah. was, on my way there, I was just looking at... I was just looking at the manual and just reading interviews and looking at images of the game. It was a long drive too. It was like 30 minutes away, um, away from our house. Well, yeah, it was 30 minutes away from our house. I was like, "Yo, I cannot wait to play this." <laughs> yeah, if I if I picked up um, some PS2 games like Crash Bandicoot, I had The Wrath of Cortex, and I would know every single picture and thing in the manual because when we didn't have. <laughs> Time to play, we would just read the manual over and over again. And growing up, you know, smartphones didn't exist, so if you picked up a JRPG and you weren't into that... If you weren't into that, um, genre, you you were screwed, because no... My dad... Because my dad would would never want to drive 30 minutes back, because after finding out it was a JRPG. Oh! And that's gas, too. Hell no. (laughs) And I don't even know what gas... I don't even remember what gas was like in 2012, but hey. Probably less than nowadays. (laughs) <laughs> yes, you're right. And you said something about the second-hand market. Like I said, publishers, I don't know about how developers feel about it, but publishers hate used games. That's why, you know, that, and that's probably why digital consoles exist now. I'm beating a dead horse, I know, but still, that's probably why those digital consoles like the PS4, I mean, PS4, 5, Siri, Xbox Series X, S, whatever you want to call it, you know, they exist without the disc slot. But I think they could also work if you made them more compact. Something you could fit in your book bag and then just to bring it to a friend's house. You know, like, because there's yep. this computer. I remember seeing a review for this. It was like that. It was a Mac computer you could put in your book bag. Not a laptop, but the computer itself. You just needed the HDMI and your keyboard and mouse and you were set for life. Nice. Speaking yes, of dead horse, and, uh, I'd, uh, I'd say that, uh, you know, one man's dead horse is another man's piñata, so... You know, feel free to go on. <laughs> yeah, man, but still, uh, still buy buy games secondhand. Uh, yeah, and another reason they don't like um, used games is because if, if some if someone is going off of hearsay about whether the game is good or not, 
you know, uh, you know how egregious return policies are for new games. Yeah. Yeah, so... It's... <laughs> So if someone can't return it, or if they only return it for like half the, their money back, then yeah, then the publisher wins. <laughs> That's why they hate used games. We talked about the where where the market is uh, is moving. I also wanted to ask, um, what's your what's your take on unfinished games being released? Because no. I think that's a trend. That's just no. There's more and more of it. <laughs> More and more. No, it's been like that for years. Ever since, like, I I remember first finding out about this issue in 2013, when Betafield 4 came out. <laughs> oh no, I, I still yeah, remember that the, the early. That was the nickname it got. <laughs> yeah, when I was 14 years old, uh, that was my first in exposure to how corrupt the game industry was. When Battlefield 4 came out in that unfinished state, and then I'm like, wait, you can, you're allowed to do that. You know how naive kids kids are, you know? Yeah. I'm like, yeah. I'm like wait, you're allowed to do that? Release a game you didn't finish, James. God. <laughs> But nowadays, you know, it's more egregious, especially with the, um, I remember five years ago, loot boxes were the top of the, I mean, were the talk of the town, and now it's with the whole NFT gaming, Square Enix is trying to dip their toes in it, well, not dip their toes, that they're shoving their whole foot into the water thing or whatever when it comes to NFTs. Yeah. So Lord help us when EA starts trying to do NFT games or whatever, if, whatever, I don't even know how that works, an NFT game. I'm gonna be part of their stuff anyway, so fuck them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. My first real encounter with this was actually with Cyberpunk, I think, I, I, I mostly oh, no. just played games that I did play. But I came to a store and I wanted to buy that for my brother for Christmas <laughs> last year. And they had like a whole shelf of Cyberpunk games. And the no. guy that was selling there, he was like, no, don't buy that. Just just don't. <laughs> no, don't buy it for PS4, it sucks. <laughs> he just sent me home and I was like, okay. Which, and if, to anyone listening, do not buy it or, uh, or for PS4 right now, even with the new patches, because one, CD Projekt has pretty much dropped support for the PS4, which means whatever glitches were left in the patch, they're they're going to be there for life. And secondly, like, the game, if you crash, if you... If you're driving your car and you hit, and you know any open world game, Stan and Drace, you just crash into a car. If you yeah. do that in this game, you will be sent flying kilometers across the map. It's not fun. <laughs> it's especially not funny when you're close to your objective, too. I remember I was like a few meters away from my objective, and then I get, fl I get sent flying like five kilometers away. <laughs> yeah, that game got yeah. Ubisofted, <laughs> to say the least. Yes, so I'm waiting to pick up the PS5 version, or maybe when I get a better PC that's not an all-in-one computer, maybe play it through there because, uh, like, I don't want to. I don't want to explain to the fire marshal that that a house fire got started from a CPU. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, so to prevent the whole thing from becoming an exclusively just uh, a video game talk uh, podcast, no problem. Uh, if I may. Uh, let's get back to the whole, uh, you know, video, uh, what do you call oh, production? them? production? Uh oh, I can talk for days about that. Well, the, the whole video essay thing, long form content. Oh, What's your man. modus operandi when it comes to stuff like that? Oh man, I love I, <laughs> I love explaining this too. It's just fun to talk about in general. Yeah, so, yeah my modus I operandi imagine. is... <laughs> Oh yes, it's fun to talk about, but my modus operandi is, before any project is, well, finding a game to talk about, kind of like how the angry video game nerd does it. And I don't just choose a random game of the week, I just choose a game I'm very familiar with, or a game that I love so much I played over and over again, either as a kid or a teenager. So, um, so yeah, that's my basis for, you know, picking a game. That's how Saint, the Saints Row project was, you know, came to life. You know, I'm sorry about that, I have an arm brace on. I, I have nerve damage right now, but... <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to adjust it, but that actually came from me making essays, too. <laughs> oh, man. Not... Oh, man. That reminds oh, me of that part in uh, the movie Doctor Strangelove, where the where the guy in the wheelchair has his uh, artificial arm, and it just kept uh, doing random shit. Yeah, you know, I can't... When we get to cyberpunk levels of, you know, steel arms and shit, let me know. <laughs> but, anyways... So once the game is picked, I need to do research. This is the least fun part of the project. Not the research part, but scripting the... Uh, de when it comes to video essays, I like to talk about what the developers were thinking at the start of the video. What was going through their minds when, uh, when it came to making this game. Why there are certain features. Why characters do certain things. Or why the story was written away in a certain way. I just smacked my desk too on accident, my bad. <laughs> but um, <laughs> I want to do that so players have an idea on, you know... Some more context on why something played out the way it did so we can you know get to the developer's head of course with japanese games that's different because the develop you know the corporate culture in japan 
you know, Japanese developers are more tight-lipped unless they're, you know, big-name developers. Like, say, um, uh, Nagoshi-san from, uh, from the Yakuza games. He loves doing interviews. So, and the dif another difficult hurdle with that comes with, do you know, the research itself. I do, I like to, you know, I go through lots of gaming websites and news stuff. You know, I try to get exclusive interviews from those people about those games. However, you know, sometimes whenever I try to go, I try to follow up on a lead I got, you know, the website was unarchived. And whenever I find a lead, like say, whenever I find something that says, oh, John Doe said he included this feature, but the link is dead. So I can't use that because it's unreliable. Lord knows if that, um, so yeah. <laughs> I don't want to give people, you know, sources that don't exist. There's like a whole investigation process. Yes, it is. You know, I don't want to get, I don't want to start rumors. You know, I, I don't want to start rumors yeah. like, you know, the whole Adaki forgot with JoJo fans. You know how some JoJo fans will be yeah. like, oh, Adaki didn't include this. This is why the story played out. Fuck off. That's not why you did that. There are full interviews. <laughs> like that thing happened when, uh, <laughs> I remember the peak of it when I was reading uh, JoJo part six. And like everyone <laughs> was talking like, some random shit about uh, some stuff in the Golden Wind, I presume. No, it was uh, it was the part before that. Uh, Diamond is unbreakable, and I think the the whole discourse was about uh, one thing from the flashback, but like like it was pretty long ago, so I. Oh um, yeah, the flashback about that about Josuke about yeah. Josuke saving his mom in that winter storm. Yes, people said that they should he should have gotten a character arc, but in reality, it's just one of those story arcs that just happens. You know, not every character needs to be fleshed out. It, exactly. Not only that, but that hair that hairstyle in the um in ninety nineteen nineties Japan was like pretty popular with delinquents or just you know cool kids. Uh, yeah, cool I mean kids, the like, whole yeah. uh, <laughs> delinquent pompadour uh, hairstyle was also in. Uh, <laughs> I think Great Teacher on Yuzuka and uh, War in the Pocket and a lot of the anime at the time, so... Yeah, and that dude from Yu Yu Hakusho used to wear, uh, wear it with... He had bright red hair. I forgot his name. It's been so long since I've seen it. But yeah, so that so my research, I do... I make sure I'm thorough so that I don't accidentally spread misinformation. Because these videos, like, as small as I am, like, they do get lots of views. So I don't want someone to say, oh, well, this creator said... Uh, Donovan did this with the game, that's why it's like this, and then that lead is untrue, and then more people on the internet start talking, and <laughs> I'm responsible for that. Yeah, I mean, in my attempt to make, uh, like, I only tried, uh, making a long-form video on Seed, because it's, a uh, it's a Gundam series from the early 2000s, the writing oh, yeah. is terrible, basically, <laughs> imagine Empress Teresa, if you know of that book. Oh no, I remember finding out about that. It's basically that, uh, Empress Frederick. Therese of yeah. Gundam. <laughs> and uh, I uh, I tried uh, initially just uh, going and looking up uh, some stuff from the production and then I said, fuck it, I'll just uh, do uh, something in the vein of, uh, let's say, combining uh, like Muller's uh, coverage of Star Wars and oh. uh, ER's, uh, ER's reviews of stuff. And uh, over time, uh, it made me like uh, it made me realize that you know I shouldn't uh, try and make it like grand and uh, all. So I guess I'll uh, I guess I'll make it much more lighthearted uh, when I resume working on that. More lighthearted, no problem. Yeah, yeah and uh, yeah. I mean, if my IRL schedule doesn't go increasingly nuts, which uh, well, I'm not sure about, uh, you know, 2023 and how how it's going to hit me, but, uh, you know, when I get to it, I'd absolutely love to, you know, redo my script and actually get it done, because oh, I've had man. so many good ideas for that. I even have jokes, like entire <laughs> Microsoft Word sheets of uh, just super specific jokes for that one. Like in the first episode, I think, like there's uh, some uh, guys uh, trying to infiltrate the colony, and uh, you know, like one of them, like a very forgettable guy, uh, just gets shot yeah. in the background, and uh, one of the pro protagonists is like Rusty, and I tr tried like uh, incorporating, uh, you know, the part from King of the Hill, like Rusty Shackleford. <laughs> I did some. I, do, I did a similar joke with that, too. <laughs> I, 
I know. Yeah, I love doing jokes like that. Like when um when Mer the scene when Mero got his face burned off, I chose I took clip a clip of Dave Chappelle doing stand up, where he was talking about say, his microphone malfunctioning with the echo. You remember that, right? He said, "Ho," oh. he was like, "Ho," oh. and <laughs> so I did that. Took the audio and then put it over Mero screaming. <laughs> Yeah, because his microphone was echoing. He said, "Whoa!" like that. <laughs> Impressive. Now let's see Paul yeah. Allen's video edit. <laughs> oh, um, tried. Uh, I tried to make uh, American Psycho joke like, uh, you know, oh, impressive. Yeah, yeah. Now let's, let's see, see Paul Allen. <laughs> <laughs> now let's see. I can do his voice. Now let's see Paul's. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God, yeah, Lunar yeah. is literally me. <laughs> <laughs> for real, for real. Okay. I cannot believe that movie blew up in recent years. Yeah, <laughs> like, I remember, like, in 2016, 2017, when it was still niche, and, uh, <laughs> you know, at that time I watched, uh, I think it was uh, Clockwork Orange, which is, oh, like, clock. absolutely <laughs> nuts, and, uh... Yes, it is. I like, the book is recently. even even more nuts. So... Yes, there... <laughs> so I got a... It, uh, I got an itch for that kind of movies at the time, and uh, oh, yeah, like what I did was I tried uh, looking up uh, very similar movies, and that thing came up. I didn't uh, get to that thing to this very day, unfortunately, unfortunately. because yeah, I I went and binged movies like crazy at that time, and and you ran out. Yeah, that's yeah, it it oh, got. Yeah. Uh, Probably flooded under all those Quentin Tarantino movies I was watching at the time. <laughs> and oh, I think the last one I watched uh, to this very day, the last big movie was, I think, Apocalypse Now. Just because the, I. Oh. Just because I absolutely dig the. Uh, you know, I love the smell of the napalm in the morning. Uh, I'll <laughs> lie. Well, Apocalypse Now. Mm. Classic. Uh, I remember, uh, I think we watched, uh, in my history class when I was in uh, the ninth grade, we watched a, uh, I think we watched a few clips of it, when because we were do going over the Vietnam War. Like, we had j literally gone from talking about the geological formation of India and in its rivers to the Vietnam War for some reason. <laughs> oh, man, that's a good movie, though. <laughs> oh, yeah, so when it comes to scripting, after I'm finished with the, um, the behind the scenes stuff which like i said is stressful what i do is uh, i watch youtube playthroughs of the uh of the game and i also try to write down mechanics i even pull the game up on my own console so that i could, so that i go and cover mechanics that weren't covered in those uh youtube videos that way I, no stone goes unturned oh man and there's also some stuff that i missed from cut scenes too that i got wrong but hey it happens but <laughs> yeah my uh, favorite bit was uh when you played the whole uh, scene with uh, Johnny Gat and the protagonist uh, fighting uh, the Japanese uh, guys in Saints Row 2, and he, like the main guy from their gang, literally called dibs on Gat uh, in the middle of the fight. Yes, and I talked about Bushido and everything. He, like he wanted, he wanted, to, he wanted to fight him so bad. He told his men not to kill him. His, um, he's, I forgot how he said, I'm not even going to butcher Japanese on here. <laughs> I don't want to end up like some weeb that tried to take Japanese in college. That's <laughs> alright, it's alright. No, I've seen it happen before, like some weebs at my uh, community college went, wearing the My Hero Academia shirts. <laughs> I remember them pi like, filing into the room where they were teaching Japanese. And um, I remember one dude, he was watching, uh, he was watching some obscure um, anime uh watching some obscure anime subbed or whatever and then he tried um we were in the lobby by the way and i was like on my phone and then all i hear out of nowhere is da -da 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 -da. he was he shouted <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay you know what if you don't wanna go for the cringe uh, impression of that line i will go ahead he said uh oh orenoa he's mine yeah, or oh, something like that oh that's but, what he said uh orenoa yeah, but I didn't uh, really nail the accent because. Uh, damn, good. Ure, Urenua. Urenua. Yeah, something <laughs> like that. Just, oh my gosh. And my problem with games like Saints Row is when the subtitles don't even put like an English or whatever native language you're playing the game in translation. 
It just says, oh, speaks Japanese. <laughs> speaks <in> Japanese. <laughs> yells in Spanish. <laughs> <laughs> or, or like literally just scary noises. Uh, you know, the <laughs> memes with, uh, <laughs> with subtitles. Yeah, the, the captions memes I know you're talking about. Yep. Oh, man. So then I go through the... I watch the game on YouTube, and I also break, pull up the game on my own console every now and then while I watch, so I make sure I don't miss mechanics. And I just write... And I also make sure... I, I don't want this to sound like I'm a uh, technical manual. I want to give my own thoughts on the story, gameplay itself, and then throw in some jokes, too. Some jokes that I come up with a lot. Half of the jokes in the Saints Row 1 and 2 videos were can't, came up with on the spot. So I'll, I'll do that during recording, and they... Yeah. Then the, once the script is finished, then there comes the most painful part... Recording, um, recording narration. <laughs> yeah, that's. I you can have imagine. Everything scripted that you that, that you say when you um, when you get to recording, or or do you just have some bullet points? What do you say? Uh, that do you have do you have uh, everything that you say in the video written out beforehand, or or do you just yes. have bullet points? Yeah, yeah. Yes, I have everything written word by word, everything in black and white from A to Z. That's every, yeah. Yeah, like I said, some of the stuff I say I do come up with on the spot. Well, like general uh, general stuff, like I'll come up. Some of it will be come up with on the spot, but a lot of the jokes, uh, those are just yeah. But what was I saying? Yeah, so the audio. I mean, so when it comes to narration, it takes at least me a, me a couple months because at least a few months to record. Mainly because you know there's stuff getting in the way. You know, I was recording the Saint, the entire Saint Row One video. I was recording. I was living in a dorm at the time, so I had to make sure like um, the people, like my suite mates. You know, the way my dorm was set up it was all of us were living in our own little, com like not complex, but little uh, one our own little room. But there was a central room, and sound and soundproofing wasn't good, so you could hear me talk about. So you could literally hear me talk about gangs and their real life counterparts from the central area. <laughs> <laughs> So I made sure nobody was in the dorm, so scheduling conflicts got in the way. Oh man, so yeah, the entire- but Saints Row 2, all the audio was captured while I was at home because the school sent me back because, you know, our professor quit and we have to wait for a new one to come, so there's no point in keeping me in the dorms if there's no one to teach me. Oh man. And then once the audio is done, you know, what I do is I go and I go and record the game itself. I go back and play it. Um. I go back and play it, and then I make sure I line up the recording with the gameplay itself, the gameplay or cutscene itself. And yeah, it's smooth sailing from there. And then after that, I, um, you know, I do, I record all this chapter by chapter. Just so, um, just so I'm not working on one big timeline, like I'm on, uh, Adobe, you've seen Adobe Premiere timelines, they look like, they look like spider webs. Yeah, I think uh, I know what you're talking about. Yes, they look like a mess. So to avoid that, I do it. You know, I do it separately. And then once each chapter is recorded, I stitch them all together on the, what I like to call the final cut file. And then it's not over yet because then I have to add music. Which, by the way, and you know, I'm not. Like I said, I'm not big enough to start earning you know lots of cash off of YouTube. So I don't mind if I get copyright claimed or whatever. Like I'm like I looked at my YouTube, um, my YouTube monetization thing. I only made twenty five cents in the past week. Oh. <laughs> So I'm not, I'm not making money off these videos. So if they copyright claim me, they can have it. <laughs> I'm not, and I, yeah. So once the music is added, then I render it. And rendering, this is not a powerful computer by any means. It could take, you know, the Saints Row 2 video took so long that um, the tab for um, Sony Vegas got burned into the screen. And you can, and if you look hard enough, you can still see it to this day. <laughs> and I didn't, and I forgot to like quick, you know, minimize and refresh it. So that was my fault. And, you know, rendering is done, then I do some little, you know, little marketing and teases for it, and then the video's released. And then there's that downtime period where I just feel empty inside for not having something to work on. And that's what happened to me, uh, like, during the complete start of the holidays. Because I finished my Christmas special, I uh, finished <laughs> my uh, editing work uh, that I had for uh, one guy at the time. And, uh, you know, then I had nothing to do. So all I had was uh, just free time and a copy of uh, one of the Wolfenstein reboots. So, oh yeah, yeah, yeah I've sunk yeah, I have, quite a lot of hours not, into that. I have not played. Yeah. New I played through half of New Order. I've not. Um, I played. I also played through Wolfenstein Youngblood. That, <laughs> I remember Sophia did the did the little live stream with Zoe. That was funny. Oh man. And so after the video goes up. You know, I start doing. I start trying to find out what I want to play next, and that's where I am right now. Um, I'm working, like I said, I'm working on three different projects just to keep myself busy. You know, if I run into a roadblock on one project, I'm like, okay, let's switch to another. This other project, 
And um, I'm currently working on the three projects I'm working on is obviously Saint Row the Third, uh, Saint Row the Third, Persona Three. That one's I'm I'm gonna love that project. That that project is my baby. Saint Row the Third, Persona Three, and there was a third game. Oh my gosh, I forgot what uh, what the third game was. Oh yeah, and Yakuza um, Yakuza Kiwami. I want to start a Yakuza series here on here too. I've already caught, covered Yakuza Zero. I want to run back and do like in depth coverage of it though. Cause I, cause that was just that video was meant to be like a thirty minute or less review. Yeah. Um, oh man. Since all three of us have been basically on both sides of the creator and viewer fence, I'm wonder, I'm wondering, uh, did you two notice a shift of sorts, like a, a, a perspective change, whenever you go back to the viewer side of things and so on? Uh, somewhat, because I, I watch a lot of video essays, in the same vein that rappers listen to rap. I, <laughs> I, I, lo I watch a lot of video essays too, and I'm like, hmm, maybe I could try something, not something like that, but like, I'll see an element in their video, and I'm like, I'll try, I could yeah. try something like that, just to be experimental. I see. You know. I mean, that's yeah. uh, kind of similar to how Matthew here, he, yeah. he listens to metal <laughs> while making metal, so... Yeah, I listen to all... <laughs> All sorts of music and and me actually too, me today too. I, yeah. today I realized that like I was listening yeah, to growing. something <laughs> something much yeah, poppier and then and just that even those elements even if you don't like the song in particular you can understand why it is successful or why why this works why that works and you can implement it in your own in your own style without without just uh, stealing ideas from others so. <laughs> Yeah, I think it's it's the same for you with videos that you can get inspired by anything and just throw it in the mix and yes. that's, that's very good. Yeah. Yes, I listen to metal too. I listen to all kinds of genres. I got you know I got clowned on as um yeah I got clowned on when I was a teenager because you know uh, you know back in the 2010s if you were black and you listened to metal or something like that you'd get made fun of. So like <laughs> uh, <yeah. laughs> nowadays nowadays people you can listen to whatever you want and be whatever. But it's like back then, man, I got and it was also during my little emo phase too. <laughs> <laughs> I was just, I was listening to Paramore. My Chemical Romance was about to drop a new album at the time. This was 2012. No, no, they had dropped uh, Danger Days in 2010. What was I saying? And that was about when it was a year before they broke up in 2013 when I was listening to them. Oh man. <laughs> and there's one YouTube, but there's one YouTuber I watch. His name is the the Snakerer. He makes these multi-hour long reviews. His biggest series yet is Yakuza, and um, his longest video on Yakuza was Yakuza Five because. It's a game with an average runtime of 40 to 50 hours, and there's a lot to cover, too. Five different cities, five characters, five conspiracies, all of them. Oh, like, with, you know, with the Snakerer, he has a lot of ground to cover with the, uh, with all these Yakuza games, and I've got a lot, and whenever I watch them, I'm like, hmm, I never really thought of that. And then I'll try, you know, not copy them, but, like, try to, like I said, incorporate in elements of something that he tried, you know, whether it be audio or video, into my, in my video. You know, with the, uh, when I did the Bushido thing, when I was talking about Bushido, I tried something on Vegas where I made the uh, the little picture of the tenets of Bushido pop up, like in a you know fade into the screen and then fade out. That's great. Yeah. As I said, so what uh, are you yeah. As I said, uh, speaking of uh, stuff back in the day, uh, like when uh, Warframe was big, I oh, uh, yeah I remember. I used to watch uh, the channel by the name of Quite Shallow, and yeah, that <laughs> fella <laughs> made. Uh, a lot of uh, great videos when it came to like new weapons, etc. And uh, when I uh, started out, like earlier in 2022, because you know, <laughs> uh, I tried uh, doing a very similar thing when it came to when it came to like the Gundam games, in my case. And uh, you know, I kind of succeeded. To a degree, but uh, yeah, I've got uh, kind of my own uh, somewhat scuffed style, which scuffed style. I love that. Yeah, which I'm kind of proud of. I mean, I make all of my stuff in MS Paint. I edit uh, with. I edit to a certain degree. I mean, uh, you can still hear some jump cuts, some of which oh, I yeah. did deliberately because. Uh, yeah, I've heard. Yeah, I remember hearing some of them. Yeah, I'm like, wait, what the hell? <laughs> yeah, because I was too lazy to go back and, uh, you know, get some uh, dead air in that uh, bit uh, just so that it sounds like, uh, you yeah, know, sounds like a natural sentence, so... Yeah, I've done I the same thing with my, with my Duel Masters review. Yeah, that, I, as much as I loved putting it together, I still, when I go back and listen to it, 
there's a lot I did wrong. First of all, for God knows why, I was recording in mono and not, um, I was recording in mono. Oh, I think. Yeah. Not, yeah, in mono, yeah. I was recording in mono, so that means your right ear is going to enjoy <laughs> <Yeah>. videos. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, secondly, there were noticeable jump cuts in in my sentence <laughs> structure. Cuts. Oh my god! And, I, and not only that, but sometimes I would speak in a run-on sentence. I would my words would crash into each other. So I actually do want to remake that video, but this time I might have to do it off the actual hardware, or because uh, I had because I found out a way to plug my PlayStation Two up to OBS, not OBS to uh, Elgato. But I just need, but I just need to find a way to smoothen it out because. Oh man, I used to edit as I went along with uh, while playing, um, while having my emulator open, which would not. Be, I was using a laptop when I edited that Duel Masters video, mind you. Oh gosh, it was terrible. <laughs> Still, I I I enjoyed making that video though, and and a few, and I want to hope that the uh, Duel Masters community has found it because it's very fleeting. The the Duel Masters community, not a lot of people outside of Japan play it uh, because well they Duel Masters pulled out of the U.S. in 2006. Unless you're a diehard fan that happens to know Japanese or um, it, it, for some reason it's huge in Singapore. So unless you're a diehard fan that knows it in Japanese or if you live in Singapore, yeah, it's not popular here. And uh, yeah, what's your uh, like general aspiration for the channel? Like uh... I don't even. Do you have a like kind of a an ideal or a specific goal that you wanna you know get uh, close to? I just want to give expo not not just exposure, but I also I want to like actually yeah I do I want to expose more games that I fell in love with that not a lot of people know about, and with popular games that I cover like Saints Row Two, I want to offer you know a different viewpoint, uh, not different viewpoint, but yeah, a different viewpoint, a new point of view to be more specific. You know, make make people think. Oh, I never really thought of that story moment like that, or I never really thought of the gameplay uh, like that. Yeah, I see. I mean, in my case, it's uh, you know, sort of in the vein of uh, a certain unnamed, uh, unnamed uh, <laughs> shonen teenager that uh, procla um, proclaimed that he wishes to be the Hokage, and oh. <laughs> you know, I want yeah, to I become the Seth Zintech of uh, old Gundam games. Yeah, and that's not a bad idea. You could be like, you know, that JoJo YouTuber Hamon beat, where he, you know, he even said it himself. He wants to, you know, try and be a source of like all things JoJo, you know, when it comes to accurate information. Which is why he, that video of his debunking the Otaki forgot trope exists. That that video series exists, so people would stop spreading this information. Yeah, I want to be a go-to for like older Gundam games because I mean, there's a lot of uh, pretty neat features. Like for example, in one of the PS2 games. There is a super specific gimmick related to falling with, uh, I think, uh, three playable units in the game. And you yeah. can basically, like, it's a, sort of like gliding, but not really. Gliding, but not really? Yeah. That sounds like that's not... <laughs> like, I'm very bad at explaining, uh, like, what it is. But it's uh, kind of like a slower fall. Anyways, uh, you can that's change like the... that thing okay, I'll, I'll later. with... Even with like uh, some other moves, and uh, yeah, you can get a lot of use uh, from uh, like uh, even the <laughs> jobber units, like the Gaza C, which is, in my opinion, incredibly underrated. Because yeah, it's a, uh, it's basically a stick figure with a gun. But, stick uh, figure with a gun. <laughs> but even, even despite that, it uh, does have the glide gimmick, which uh, it uses very effectively with some other moves. Yeah, I'll probably put that thing on screen because um, Yeah, I need to see this. I'm having a lot of difficulty put it in, in putting it into the words. Yes, but my question to you is would you would you mind covering armored core on your channel? Oh that's that's a super tricky one. Like uh yeah, the armored core games I've played I think some from the PS2 generation and yeah. uh, some from the I think it was PSP? PSP, like in the oh, yeah, they had Formula a, Front they had PSP. or something like that, and uh, yeah, I uh, I'm kind of split on that because yeah, there's uh, there's the whole uh, real robot genre of uh, mecha that I absolutely dig, while at the same yeah, time yeah. I'm much deeper into stuff like uh, Gundam. So you know, there's <laughs> far more people who can do a much much better job. Yeah, edit. <laughs> so I mean, guess I'll stick with the myriad of uh, 
all the lesser known uh, Gundam games because it has some of my favorites. It has the, you know, the Monoai uh, Sporting Jobbers. It has the. Sport <laughs> yeah, I've, it I've has only a lot of cool one, shit. Yeah, I've only played one mech game in my life. It was Gundam Versus. A friend gave it to me. Shout out to you, Terry, if you're listening. He gave it to me as a as a birthday gift. The one for the back. PS4. Yes, yeah, for the PS4. Yeah, and um, believe it, yeah, I found it on store shelves too. So it goes to show that the uh, mech genre is starting to balloon in popularity. Yeah, the Gundam versus for the PS4. It's a bit of a weird game in the franchise, but it's still pretty fun. Like mm -hmm. uh, it has certain gimmicks from both the PSP generation, the newer arcade installment, as in like EX versus Two Cross Boost, I think, and <laughs> a lot of other things. But it's like when compared to like Maxi Boost or other such entries, it's uh, it's a real oddball. I'm looking at the gliding and yeah, let me see this clip real quick. So he jumps and then he slightly glides. I think I get what you're saying because I skimmed through the video a little. I I kind of get what you're trying to say. Yeah, and the funny thing is that uh, like aside from uh, attacks, uh, you can even chain it with uh, like for example the. You know the transformed, uh, transformed uh, mode uh, in the case of the bound dock and the uh, gas sea, and yeah. that's the funny part, because you can get a lot of mobility out of a like completely minute gimmick that uh, would have been uh, forgotten <laughs> about. Oh man, I love games that do that. You know, you get a lot of use out of some obscure gimmick. Well, like I said, that's what makes breaking down games fun, and even and what I also love is how my videos also serve as somewhat of a guide to uh, someone that's either hoping to get into these games, although why they'd watch this, whatever. I, I, anyway, I've watched video essays of games I don't own, so no judgment there. But either got gu either guides for someone that's about to get into that game or someone that's currently playing it, and then make them think, oh, I could have done that. So with these videos, I like to be helpful too when it comes to um, uh, you know, trying to. When it comes to trying to get past certain levels, like in Saints Row One, there's a stalker that was that chases you and Aisha while you have a bomb rigged for your car. So when I was a ki uh, when I played that as a teenager, I thought you were supposed to drive away from him, but then I found out through guides that you were supposed to uh, hit the brakes on your car and then shoot him and then drive. So I hope someone, I hope the people that did watch the, um, the video got some use out of that. And although Saints Row One does need a PC port, but because that game, yeah. Oh, speaking of game advice, uh, if uh, anyone here plays, uh, yeah, Mobile Suit Gundam side stories, then on that <laughs> one level that is a pain in the ass where you have to fight five big exams, spam the Madrock. Spam the Madrock Gundam. Okay. The PSA over. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, and that reminds me of when um, Nintendo used to do a thing. They had a support line in the 80s and 90s where, uh, no, other game companies had this too, where you'd call in, you had to pay like per minute. I forgot how many, how many adult, I mean, how much it cost in the U.S. You had to pay per minute to uh, get gu helpful guides on games. And the people themselves, there's a behind the scenes mini doc on this too. The people themselves would be sitting at a desk and they'd have a textbook full of the games that they're trying getting help for. I mean, giving help for. And they would sit and read out like some of the stuff. Like, it's so fun. I wish... <laughs> It's obviously it's obsolete awesome. by now because you know we have the internet, and we have game FAQs. Which, by the way, if you're playing an RPG, use game FAQs. I love game FAQs. Yes, and I love seeing people fight over like whenever someone asks for help. No, fuck you! I was supposed to do it that way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and uh, <laughs> speaking of game FAQs, that way I find uh, I found out that uh, like a very small mech can like uh, do a very do a charge attack for like. So much damage, it basically parallels uh, one of the strongest units in the game. Like in the case of, I think it was uh, Gundam vs. Gundam Next Plus for the PSP. And it was Gundam absolutely Gundam. awesome. Like, uh, <laughs> you were piloting this uh, little green ball that had noodle arms. Like if you picked it in the arcade mode or in the versus mode, doesn't matter. And uh, you could just uh, tap one input and the hand just started spinning, spinning, spinning. And if you didn't stop, it would it would spin like uh, you know the engine on a helicopter. And if you hit something like that, literally it got vaporized completely. Oh my god, my raffle uh, for any internet OGs, my raffle copter goes. A raffle copter, yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I remember when YouTube first came out. But yeah, and speaking another word about game FAQs, they've been acquired by the worst of the worst. 
Fandom. No, I'm not talking fandom as a concept. I'm talking about the company fandom. Oh, that one. So yeah, fandom, I've, I've um, noticed those... that. Oh, God. So fandom, when they acquired wikis many years back, they made the UI way worse. And they made the UI worse. They also converted all the MP... Not MP3s. Um, They converted all the um PNGs and JPEGs. They converted all of them to WebP, which made... Like, First of all, fuck them for that. <laughs> yeah, fuck that before. And then when I was recovering audio of the conversation between Troy, the, you know, the wiretaps I did in Saints Row 2, when I was downloading audio for, they were converted them from MP3 or Wave to this weird ass audio format. I can't even remember the name. Yeah, your RAM usage would spike. Damn. Yeah, it'll start up an automatic live stream. So thank you for spiking up my RAM to sixty <laughs> percent. <60%. laughs> As if I needed to see a Twitch stream of, of Avatar The Last Airbender, asshole. <laughs> like, <laughs> so yeah, fandom... So And they've acquired game FAQs, so now whenever I go to try to read uh, read up a guide on um, on Legend of Heroes for the PSP, now it's gonna... Now I'm gonna be uh, swarmed with ads about the new about the new GTX or whatever. <laughs> That's why I have That's the a, ad block. Me too, um, Brave has an installed ad blocker, and some news sites that I had to get my research for Saints Row 2 and 3 on, they, they cussed me, not cussed me out, but like, they yelled at me, they're like, yo, you're using an ad blocker, you're not reading shit till you oh. turn that shit off. <laughs> so, I, so I gave in, I gave them the ad revenue, just so I can get some information from my source real quick, and then get the hell out. <laughs> but what I did was I screenshotted the, uh, so as a little middle finger to them, so I don't give them more revenue, I screenshotted the articles, and then saved them to my computer, so I wouldn't have to... <laughs> Okay, now that's petty. Yeah, that's pretty smart. <laughs> because I'm so I'm a lazy man, all right. I took time out of my day to screenshot the article, to scroll through the article, screenshot them, and then save them to my computer, so I don't have to turn my ad blocker and spike up my RAM again. Yeah, fair yeah. enough. Yeah. <laughs> they are so, and they're so aggressive about it too. They're they're so blatantly open. They're like, hey, we can't earn revenue. Yeah, you're, yes, IG, and I'm sure you're struggling, struggling in your shoestring budget of being a worldwide game new, news outlet. <laughs> On your shoestring budget of four, of four, a however, many, however million dollars per year you guys earn, I'm sure you can take the hit of someone not reading an old article from 2012 about some game I'm covering. Oh man! And speaking, and we're, while we're on the topic of ad revenue, oh my gosh! So, uh, I know this is not me trying to flex or anything. No, I'm, <laughs> yeah. I'm barely making, a, I'm barely making a few cents off my YouTube videos. With the amount I'm ha with the amount I have, I can only buy a soda can at, at the Walmart down the street from me from the little uh, machines. <laughs> but anyways. Um, on the topic of ad revenue, so here's how it works. Like, so YouTube, if you want to adver um, advertise, if you want to monetize your um, your video, you need to fill out a questionnaire. Oh no! Now the questionnaire, yes, it sucks. Okay. So um, obviously, the Saints Row 2 video got demonetized, um, if not for the copyright issues, but because of well, how much how much language is used in that video? I, like George Carlin would be proud. That's how. <laughs> so, anyways. Now, the videos that I was able to monetize, I had to fill out a questionnaire. And it's so, you know what, let me go into YouTube Studio, because I can't remember off the top of my head. Here, let me go to the studio. Like, I mean, if I were to, if I had to do a questionnaire every single video entry, that yeah, um, yeah, would have probably killed me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and they don't bombard you with video entries like, hey, you uploaded this, now you need to fill it out. No, you can just choose to turn it on or off. That's why, you know, whenever there's a YouTuber that covers the tragedy, you know, covers tragedies or whatever, they... Well, certain tragedies, something uh, that's not, you know, a far cry from their the normal stuff they cover. That's why they turn off monetization. Like when Etika died, people turned off their um, monetization. Okay, so let me go and fill out, I mean, look at the questionnaire real quick. Let me just click on one random video, like this one. Okay, so if I turn it on, it'll ask me, all right, when I ask you, there's a little line. It says, inappropriate language, profanity in the title thumbnail. And, um, I don't... <laughs> This is how you know YouTube wants to turn into TV. They said, is there a brief... Well, not is there. I'm, I'm paraphrasing, okay? It says, um, is there abbreviated or censored profanity that's um, acceptable for network television? So they're trying to be like YouTube. I'm not YouTube, like TV. So you guys live in Europe. I don't know if they have like something like the FCC. In the United States and I think Canada, I don't know if they have an equivalent to that. There's a, uh, It's called the FCC. Seven words you can't say on TV. Jit, piss, cunt, cocksucker, motherfucker. Yeah, go for Fuck. it. I mean, uh, okay. I think you're not yeah, right. I think I mean, I I'm making squat from this, anyways. And yeah. I mean, with my oh. sense of humor, I would likely <laughs> not see a dime from YouTube, anyways. Yeah. So they're asking you if those words are in your videos. Um, 
they said, and the thing is though, a lot of YouTubers have this misconception that you can't use like any kind of cuss words in videos. No, you can use those seven naughty words you can't say on TV, but you can't do it like how I did and be like George Carlin in the Saints Row 2 video. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. But like you, if you cuss all, you can use those seven forbidden words, but you can't just use it all over the video. It's unmonetizable. Yeah, that's yeah. why it aggravates. Yeah, another thing I want to rant about before I move on to the other questionnaires. I mean, I would do it more just to spite them. <laughs> yes. <laughs> lots of YouTubers will censor out the most benign words. They'll, they'll yes. censor out the word. They'll censor out the word suicide, which I guess I don't know. Sure, go for it if you're that. <laughs> they'll censor, but then they'll censor out words like kill, death. Um, some YouTubers will like you. Um, will like. Will dance around whatever they're trying to talk about. Like, there's one true crime. You, there are a few true crime YouTubers I follow, and they'll talk about a person that was raped and killed. But this person got then... snuggle struggled and then Minecrafted. <laughs> yes, and then they'll say they'll say, "Oh, um, Mary Mary Jane Doe, she was kidnapped and assaulted." See, that's my biggest problem. Ass uh, they mean, when they say assaulted, they mean rape, but that assault means two different things. It means rape and to beat someone up. So. And you won't find out until you either read up on the case yourself or until, like, they say something about it later on in the video that, you know, they got raped. So I hate when, so, like, trying to censor out words takes away from the impact of what you're trying to say. Yeah. Yeah, and when yeah. I've seen people censor, like, you censor Hitler because you can't say that, I don't know why you can't say that. <laughs> oh my gosh, that, so yeah, that's, I, I hate when YouTubers do that. And then, the, or either that, or they'll censor, or they'll censor out those kinds of words, but then go into detail of what happened to someone in, ver in very graphic detail. Oh, I'm going to censor out the word cancer, but I'm going to go into, um, but I'm going to go in depth about how this person got chopped up in the woods and then had their body <laughs> spread all over a sewer system. <laughs> <laughs> if you use nice words, it's okay. <laughs> so anyway, friendly. so yeah, yeah you know so what? Video... Uh, uh, if I may, for a second, imagine if no, someone happy. like tried to do like a video on I don't know Jeffrey Dahmer or something like that, or, or someone like that, and just going with the full odd friendly dictionary, it would be <laughs> so fucked up. Yes, if they said if they danced around what he did. <laughs> No, I can't tell you what happened to him, but it was bad enough that the uh, um, that the police couldn't find him. Well, uh, <laughs> oh no! <laughs> yes, a YouTuber like that. A YouTube, one of the YouTubers, I, uh, one of the true crime YouTubers I watched said that. <laughs> said something along those lines. I won't name him. <laughs> oh man! So um, so yeah. So in in conclusion about the inappropriate language, you're fine if you use the forbidden FCC words, but you can't, you know, just you know, you can't just say it all over the video. Otherwise, it's unmonetizable. So secondly, this is where I get in trouble with um, with my gaming videos. I play a lot of M-rated games. A lot of the M-rated games I play on this channel aren't... Half of them don't really deserve that rating, like Persona 3. At worst, is rated T for teen. But... Hold on. Um, actually, no, 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 never mind. The segment I'm talking about is adult content, so never mind. I don't get in trouble with that. I don't really show stuff like that. So this is where I do get in trouble, and it shows something about violence. Uh, like I said, I do play some violent games on this channel. Like, you know, Saints Row 2. So that's where, um, so when I was trying to monetize the Sleeping Dogs video, I was trying to see what if they had, like, a clause for when it comes to video games. Now, they have one that says, focus on gameplay manufactured to create a shocking experience. I, that's very vague. Like, are you talking about those fatality compilations um, whenever a new Mortal Kombat game comes out? Like, I don't get it. It's egregious. And then it'll show, st it says stuff like video games, uh, gameplay showing sexual violence, gameplay showing violence motiva motivated by hate, which by the way, there's a video like that on YouTube that came out eight years ago where someone was killing, where someone was killing uh, furries in uh, Watch Dogs. Yeah, you know on Watch Dogs you have the ability to see someone yeah. talking, like what someone does. I know, I know. Yeah, the, if someone was killing people over the stuff they did on the <laughs> profiler. <laughs> and YouTube, um, I think they got the video banned for a short time because of that. That's funny. Yes. And then it says video gameplay showing graphic torture, which, well, the GTA 5 retrospective is out. <laughs> I mean, uh, people playing um, the Saints Row reboot, that would be graphic torture. And that's, it said that the CIA, um, so I can confirm this, the CIA over in Guantanamo Bay, whenever they bring terrorists over there, they use, um, they hook them up to, they strap them to a chair, their legs, and then they put a controller in their hands in a Saints Row <laughs> reboot. Oh no! <laughs> Yeah, there have been many um, activist groups. They're trying to right now. They're trying to, you know, they're trying to get them to tone down on that. It's like waterboarding. <laughs> At that point, I'd take that, uh, you know, cyanide fake tooth, or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> oh 
Oh man, so it says gameplay showing violence directed at miners, which first of all, unless you have a mod at the at the ready, like in Skyrim or, or Oblivion. Or Fallout New Oblivion Vegas. Needs... Oh yeah, Oblivion, I don't even think Oblivion had children. And then gameplay showing violence directed at real named persons, which there aren't that many? I guess if you're playing The Sims and you name your guy Peter Molyneux and show him drowning in a, in a pool, I guess? I don't know, that's incredibly specific for a very odd reason, like with the whole uh, guidelines for the named persons. I mean, uh, wouldn't that mean that uh, whenever you play, regarding... I don't know, what's the game where you... Oh, like, uh, for example, if you played uh, all the Wolfenstein game, like from the late 90s, you know, oh, the oh, mechanized uh, Austrian warmonger. <laughs> Getting, Austrian warmonger. Yeah, a certain a certain guy. He's got a uh, very small mustache, and uh, he flunked oh, the art school. Yeah. <laughs> so I mean, w would that be uh, like uh, within that uh, sort of uh, regulation? Like you are basically, you know, doing some violence on a on a named person. Well, yes, you are basically killing. You are basically killing a certain man that went to art school. <laughs> that was born on the twentieth of April. So I get. I think that should be monetizable. I don't care. Yeah, I mean. Um, Basically, my... I think... I also think that churches should allow Doom to be played. Yeah, I mean, sure. Imagine going to a Russian Orthodox church, and then you see some guy playing Doom Eternal on the PS4. Yeah, I mean... If that was a thing, I would, uh... I would have, uh, like, um, completely converted from, Is like, the... you know, being uh, somewhat non-denominational to, you know, switch into the Church of Doom. Why not? <laughs> Doom is a Christian game. I don't care what anyone says. You're yeah. killing demons. Yes. <laughs> You're doing good. Yes, and uh, <laughs> uh, if I may, like there's uh, there's this guy called uh, Mike Curtis. He makes uh, he makes comics, and uh, he uh, is also the guy I do some of the edits for. And uh, you know, in one video, he's. Uh, he said that, uh, you know, he tried convincing, I don't remember whether it was like uh, either his local preacher or uh, someone like that, uh, that uh, Doom uh, is in fact a very Christian game and uh, should not be looked down upon. Uh, for it uh, completely depicts fighting uh, demons. Yes, it does. It, we're, we're fighting demons. We're going yeah. to hell to fight demons. We're not summoning them. We're not worshipping them. We're worshiping yeah. them. <laughs> Doom is a Christian game. They they need to put it in churches. Yeah, we're fighting uh, like tons of both the undead and the satanic in the oh. name of a deceased uh, pet rabbit from Doom yeah. 2. <laughs> Yo, they need to make a John Wick game. The, yes. Remember when they revealed a John Wick game at a um, at E3 2019? It come to find out it was a strategy game. Now, yeah. What? That, now what that was rather uh, rather painful. Now what strategy is John Wick himself coming up with? No, he's not, now he doesn't go. Now he doesn't like just jump in wanting to shoot someone. He's very careful about how he does it. But still, like he is not that careful though. I mean, at that point, so it would be easier to just mod up. Uh, I don't know, Hotline Miami too. That's true. Yeah, that game. Yeah, that game is fun. And uh, oh yeah, I found a, I found another clause in the YouTube studio. I just when I just exited it out. Let me go back to it. Uh, go. You know, let me find the questionnaire because this was about gameplay, violence. See more. Uh, it says display. Oh, hold on a second. Yeah, this is where um, a lot of yeah, this is a, a lot of um, creators get in trouble. It says graphic game. Hold on. It says graphic game violence includes severe injuries such as beheadings and dismemberment, focusing on bodily fluids and or prolonged and severe uh, or severe agony. Well, like you know, games like God of War. Well, the old God of War exists. I, I don't. I'm not a big fan of Norse of War. No, really, I'm not. <laughs> yep. Uh, by the way, Lunar, you. If I recall correctly, do have a podcast on your own, right? Party Good chat, Norwich. if I recall. I tr Yeah. Uh, I want to do it because um, I want to reboot it. And it turns out that someone else had a channel called that, so I need to rebrand it because I don't want to step on anyone's toes. <laughs> What's your, uh, you know, title you're uh, coming up with so far? I can't think of any. But yeah, I'm trying to rebrand it, and I'm also searching for hosts right now. I, I, this sounds like a classified in, um, in, in Craigslist, searching for new podcasts. <laughs>
Yeah, I'm pretty sure a stoner over, you know, <laughs> just right next door would would be the perfect fit. <laughs> or maybe I could walk down to 7-Eleven down the street, ask him if they wanna if they wanna hang out on a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> But, um, so what happened was she criticized God of War, the new, uh, you know, Norse of War, whatever you want to call it, the new God of War games, and she, the most annoying people on Twitter destroyed her mentions. Yeah, I called the game Dead of Boy, <laughs> because, like, that's... No, and it, and it wasn't God of War fans or anything doing, like, like criticisms, like, oh, why don't you like the game? No, it was God of War fanboys. Yeah, I, I saw that one. Like, how <laughs> dare you platinum a game that you despise? Like, that's uh, one of the few occasions that, right. uh, during which, uh, you know, a journalist gets uh, flagged for having uh, integrity. Yeah, oh gosh. And yeah, if you want to get technical, the kind of work we do with video essays, it could be considered game journalism. Oh no. <laughs> it well, could be. Basically, you're, you're investigating more in, in depth, and, yeah. Yes, you are, so you're I'm investigating not... more in depth, and um... Um, I do know one. I do know one, one person. They uh, they uh, got the people that were re responsible for Silent Hill Homecoming. I don't know how they did this because you know developers sometimes are hard to contact, and I get and I I get nervous about contacting content creators or game developers themselves because either they want to distance themselves from like game developers, they probably want to distance themselves from a certain project, or even if the project was good or bad. In the same way that like say you know Nirvana, you know Kurt Cobain hated "Smells Like Teen Spirit" at Teen Spirit, yeah. or how Radiohead hated their number one song, which was "Creep." Matter, it got to the point where one fan was yelling for them to play "Creep," and the guy te and the lead singer he teased him with like a few strums of the first like uh, of the first chords uh, of that song, and then played something else. <laughs> I mean, that's where I have a rather unfair advantage. You see, I like a lot of uh, social skills. However, I also like a certain degree of self-awareness when it comes to uh, contacting people. Meaning that, uh, you know, I kind of, I've kind of gotten through the part where it's super awkward. Now it's like I try. Yeah, I know. Uh, maybe I fail. Maybe I don't. Fuck it. At least I try. I know, I get nervous about contacting them. I'm like, all right, do, I'm thinking, they're like, okay, do I want to, do I really want to do an interview with some rando that's got, like, less than a few, uh, less than a thousand subscribers? <laughs> but still, I do, but when I cover these games, I do genuinely want to speak to some of the developers. I want to speak with Mike Kulos. Uh, he's probably logged out. Hold on a second, let me pull it up. Yeah, oh yeah, there's, I'm not getting in contact with him, but still. Still, game developers, hit me up if you can. <laughs> I mean, that would be pretty neat, seeing all those yeah. interviews. Like, Lovely in my case, uh, I uh, mostly cover, like, oh, either yeah. Japanese-only releases or really old uh, ones, so my best hope is to scramble out the good old Google Translate. However, it's like, do I really want to try? It's, uh, yeah, I'm kind of iffy on that one. Yeah, for my sound cut out. It's always during a podcast that Discord decides to do this. It's funny. Is there anything else that you can do about the connection, or or do we just? What do you say? Whether if, uh, there's yeah. Uh, yeah, whether there's like um, yeah a way to fix it. I right know. Way to fix it. Oh, well, that's just my internet. So we might have huh? We might have to do closing notes early. <laughs> yep. I guess we'd have yeah. to. Yeah. Cause yeah, this is not yeah. Yeah, this is less than optimal, to say the least. Yes, yeah. Yes, this is, yeah. We might have to do, yeah, let's do closing notes then. Okay, uh... Hey, closing notes... Damn, I didn't, uh, I didn't write <laughs> any of, uh, the closing notes down, so... Oh, it's all good. Yeah, it's time to, yeah, we gotta, we gotta do this, it just disconnected me again. Okay, so, closing notes. All the games are free, Kino... <laughs> you make, uh, cool stuff, and, uh... Yeah, let's uh, do the outros. So, I guess I'll go first. Shirtlet signing out. Definitely I check Luna it. out and... Uh, yeah. <laughs> what the fuck? I don't know what to say. <laughs> you go, man. <laughs> do you have uh, any outro of... Uh, you know, any outro that you usually do? No, I don't do an outros. Or even, or even intros, because I can't think of any. <laughs> oh. Oh no no! I like when I say outros, I'm talking like people will have a little catchphrase or whatever at the end of their videos. Yeah, I yeah. Like in my case, I uh, stole uh, 
like the very first intro, the hi everyone shirt light here from I think Sandman and you know, the rest is history. <laughs> but yeah, man, if you um but yeah, if you're in the mood for stuff for me covering you know, for me covering games that are, you know, big or small, you know, in very in depth, feel free to feel free to watch, man. <laughs> Like I said, I love expo. I love exposing more of the. Uh, well, I love exposing like different sides of like big games, and then like exposing smaller titles. So yeah, give my videos a try if you want. <laughs>